Now, those are some theme songs. Welcome to Forgotten TV, a new podcast that uh, uh, will be brought to you hopefully every week. Um, you'll find us uh, on the Forgotten TV Facebook page as well as your uh, favorite podcast aggregator or app. And uh, my name is Chris Cooling. I um, found a DVD Chris on Twitter. Just to tell you a little bit about uh, our upcoming show, I would call this episode zero, just to give you a little bit of a background of what uh, we might cover here on Forgotten TV. I'll be joined by uh, some, uh, some friends on, on future shows. Grew up in the 1970s and 80s, uh, watching a uh, originally a black and white, probably a 19-inch black and white Admiral TV. Um, I remember watching a lot of uh, Channel 39 in Houston, Texas, KPRC TV, and we would watch uh, such great shows like Space 1999 or Star Trek or reruns of The Twilight Zone or Get Smart. So uh, this is long before internet or uh, uh, really the mass coverage of uh, of media that, that was done sort of later 80s uh, un- and continues, of course, to an extreme today with uh, with internet. But uh, back in the day... You couldn't uh, just pull up information. Uh, you had to watch a show like Entertainment Tonight or uh, read the uh, insert in the newspaper to find out what was going on or read a magazine, uh, find out what was happening with uh, with new movies and TV shows. Or you could read the articles in TV Guide and so forth. So some of us used to do things like uh, write our own episode guides of uh, uh, classic TV shows. I remember watching Greatest American Hero and Wonder Woman and Battlestar Galactica and writing down the episode names so I could keep track of uh, how many episodes there were and what they were about. And uh, it uh, sort of blows my mind. You can just pull all that stuff up just instantly now. doesn't matter what the, uh, what the show, what the topic, uh, you, can, you can pull up just about everything about it. But TV used to have some great theme songs, didn't it? Uh, they don't do that a lot anymore. There are, there are a couple of holdouts. Uh, recent shows like uh, Mad Men and, uh, I guess, Law & Order uh, still have some, some great instrumental themes. But uh, a TV theme song, uh, often accompanied by lyrics, used to be something that was, uh, that was commonly done and explained the show to, uh, to people who maybe a new viewer just that week um, can remember such a, some of the great uh, like police detective shows like Hill Street Blues and Cagney and Lacey had great instrumental themes. Uh, Mike Post and Pete Carpenter used to, to write great TV theme songs uh, like for Greatest American Hero or The Rockford Files, The A-Team. Um, some shows had uh, 60, 75, 90 second theme songs to uh, open up a, uh, a one-hour show, and that's simply not done today uh, for commercial time, if, if for no other reason. But uh, I remember a show called Angie with Donna Pescal had an incredible 90-second theme song that just introduced all the characters every week and explained uh, what the show was. Upcoming topics that we can discuss on Forgotten TV... Um, outside of specific TV shows that uh, obviously we'll be talking about. Remembering the greatest uh, or the great voiceover actors for, for TV. Remember the announcers for ABC and other, other networks? Uh, such announcers like uh, Ernie Anderson used to be the great voice of ABC with uh, This is the Sunday Night Movie. Tonight. I've got you. you. You've got me? Who's got you? It's the Man of Steel in action. America's greatest superhero. Hang on, Jim. Marlon Brando, Gene Hackman, Valerie Bry, Margot Kidder, and Christopher Reeve as Superman. Danny Dark, who provided the uh, voiceover for uh, uh, Superman. Uh, for the the Super Friends in the 70s and did a lot of uh, TV announcing work. He's got X-ray vision. I feel like a peeping Tom. 
and it's driving him crazy. If this a come on or what? They can't resist the powers of Matthew Starr Friday. I'd like to talk about uh, some of Gene Roddenberry's forgotten TV movies of the 70s and 80s. Um, I mean, a lot of people remember uh, he worked on The Lieutenant in the 60s and a couple of other shows outside of Star Trek. But uh, I'm recalling uh, shows like Genesis 2 and Planet Earth, which were uh, attempts to uh, launch a, another uh, sci-fi TV series. Um, a show called The Questor Tapes and uh, another show called Spectre. So we'll talk about what uh, all those were about. Remember the great uh, fall TV network campaigns that uh, networks used to do in in the fall? Especially, I remember uh, NBC and ABC used to put on some really great uh, campaigns. We can talk about the uh, uh, interstitials that they used to run in the afternoons and on Saturday morning, such as uh, in the news. In the news, what went up may begin to come down. When oil prices shot sky high, there was economic panic in many countries. Now some people are afraid oil prices may come down. We'll be back with oil prices in the news. And Schoolhouse Rock. As your body grows bigger, your mind grows flower. It's great to learn, because knowledge is power. It's Schoolhouse Rockin', the chip on the back of your favorite Schoolhouse Rock. There was a lot of weird stuff on Saturday mornings. Uh, I'm uh, remembering a bunch of uh, uh, Sid and Marty Croft uh, shows that were... Uh, in, Typically, it was from them or uh, Ruby Spears Productions, stuff like Bigfoot and Wild Boy. Out of the great Northwest comes the legendary Bigfoot, who eight years ago saved a young child lost in the vast wilderness and raised that child until he grew up to be Wild Boy. Electra Woman and Dyna Girl, The Croft Super Show, Arc 2, um, and really far out stuff like Lidsville and H.R. Puff and stuff and Wonderbug. We'll be talking about all of that. And there were some forgotten TV shows based on movies. I mean, for every MASH or Highlander the series, um, there was Logan's Run or Planet of the Apes, Starman or War of the Worlds. We'll be talking about all of those. Um, there was some great time travel shows in the 70s and 80s, and slightly before. Um, shows like Voyagers, um, The Time Tunnel, a uh, TV movie called Time Express. We'll be talking about the, uh, how The Fugitive was a prototype for tons of shows, everything from Lucan to Starman, Incredible Hulk. Lots of shows had the, uh, the fugitive element added to it. Some of the uh, animated TV versions of live action shows such as uh, The Addams Family or ALF, The Brady Bunch, um, Lassie, Mork and Mindy, Star Trek and The Partridge Family all had uh, animated versions of uh, the live action counterparts. We can talk about the ABC after school specials, the uh, rise of syndicated TV in the 1980s. You know, for every Star Trek The Next Generation or uh, successful. A franchise like uh, Highlander the series, uh, there was Superboy or War of the Worlds or Dracula the series, and some things that a lot of people don't remember. I'm uh, recalling a lot of the, uh, the TV superheroes of the 70s and 80s. A lot of people remember The Greatest American Hero, but what about My Secret Identity or Misfits of Science, The Man from Atlantis? 
uh, the TV version of Spider-Man, or the Shazam and Isis Hour. We'll be talking about what that's all about. And looking at some of the, uh, the TV guides and looking at the schedules of specific years. Some of TV's more outrageous vehicles, like the uh, sci-fi RV on Arc 2, or the uh, tricked-out uh, semi on the Highwayman, or the Street Hawk motorcycle, or the, the uh, Lamborghini that Auto Man used to drive, the, what we used to call the Cursor car. So there's a lot of, uh, uh, lot of topics that we can discuss outside of specific uh, uh, TV titles. And hope to be bringing you uh, some of those topics in the near future. So you can find me online at uh, on Twitter at DVD Chris, um, on our Forgotten TV Facebook page. I'm also a co-host of the Walnut Grovecast, uh, another podcast where we discuss uh, the uh, Little House on the Prairie TV series, and occasionally I'm a guest on uh, VHS Rewind. So uh, tune in next time, and I hope to see you soon.